What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. And drop your avocados because today we're laser and toast, baby. Good toast, flowery, um, kind of wonder bready a little bit. Also, I know there's a certain amount of people out there that hate it when I eat on camera. You can hear it. Nom, nom, nom. That's right. Today we're going to be using my favorite laser, the X-Tool D1 10 watt diode laser to see if we can make the perfect piece of toast. Why toast, you ask? Well, that's a very good question because I get asked for settings all the time. And here's the deal with lasers. Your settings are gonna be different. You may be able to ballpark it, but you're always gonna have to dial in settings for your own laser. There are all sorts of things that can come into play. Humidity in the shop, temperature the laser's running at, all sorts of stuff like that. So today I'm gonna to show you how to design your own power grid in LaserBox Basic. Why are we doing it on toast? Because I'm pretty sure that none of you guys have any preconceived notions on what the best power and speed is gonna be for toast. So I'll be showing you how to do this in LaserBox Basic. I'll also show you how to do it in Lightburn. Lightburn now has a tool to do it that I'm not crazy about, but it is there. I'll also show you another website that'll allow you to create your own power grids as well. I guess, let me back up real quick. You wanna do a power grid on any new material that you're thinking about running the laser on so you get an idea of ideal settings. There is nothing out there that will create a power grid for you in LaserBox Basic, which is why I'm gonna show you how to do it in there. But first, to the computer! Okay, and here we are in Laser Box Basic. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna make ourselves a little rectangle. Boop. And then we're gonna make that 10 by 10. Now, let's see, what version are we running here? Just so you guys know, I am running uh, version 1.3.0. So there's been a couple of changes in this last update. One of them being, uh, when you select something in the engrave field, that is a line, it, the speed only goes up to 80 millimeters per second. It used to go to 180. Now, if you select fill, you'll notice that this changes back and will now go to 180. So if you need to get that 180, you need to do something that is filled. I'm not 100% on why they changed that, but just to kind of give you guys a heads up. So now that we have, now that we have our one box, what we're gonna do is I wanna make this box 10% and we'll leave it at 180 and I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, so now we're gonna copy, paste, maybe, I'm gonna copy, paste, and then we're gonna grab the next one. We're gonna bring this down about four millimeters. Copy, paste. You can do this however. This, I feel like I line them up better when I do it like this. Once you have your 10 rows, and you can do this for different, you don't have to do 10 rows. We're just, we're doing 10 rows for the example. Come here to text and I'm going to type 180. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna put it right there. And then I'm just going to copy paste, bring this guy down. Since we go from zero to 180, we're gonna increment these in 18s because it makes it the most even. So I'm gonna make this 162 and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change this to 162 as well. Now we don't have layers like we do in light burn, but individual objects can be manipulated separately. So this is still at 180. If I click on this one, you'll see that the speed is 162. So while we're going down, we're just going to go 144 and then we're gonna change this guy to 144 as well. Okay, and once I get that first line done, I just wanna come in here and I just check and make sure that these have all been changed and I didn't mess something up. So these are all 10%. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy these, paste, move them over, copy, paste. So now once we have our grid made, we're gonna come in here and we are going to insert more text. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna say 10. And if you want to save a little bit more time, you could actually put the 10 up here before you duplicated all these, because that's kind of what we're going to do anyway. We're just going to go, we're going to grab another one, put it over here. 
Okay, so this one's already at 10%, which is why we changed that in the beginning. Now I'm gonna change this one to 20, and when I do that, I'm gonna select this whole row, and I'm gonna change this to 20 as well. And this is kind of my checks and balances, just doing these at the same time. 30, and then we're just gonna grab this row and change it to 30. Okay, now once I get to here, I like to just kind of click in these randomly and just check and make sure that I got, I didn't mess anything up. Next, we're just gonna label this up. So we're gonna bring this right about there. We're gonna turn it 270. And then I'm gonna bring it in a little bit just because we wanna be kind of tight and close to everything. We're gonna be toy. All right, and then I'm gonna come up here and this is gonna be power. Um, same thing, I'm just gonna bring it in there, be kind of close. Okay, and then this is your power grid. Now, that is a lot of steps, but once you have this, you only have to need to make this once, then you just, you just export it. We'll export it out here to, and I already done this, but it's an 18 to, to 180, 10 to 100 grid for LaserBox or LQX, if you're wondering. And you save it, and then you're good to go. Now with the toast, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna take these three off because I have a feeling they're just gonna burn through the toast. <laughs> and so I don't, I, this is just gonna save us a little bit of time when we're doing our test. We'll import, or we'll export this one as well. We're gonna call this the toast grid, yay. All right, and that is it kids. Um, we will head downstairs. Actually, I'm gonna jump into Lightburn and show you how you can do a test grid in there and how you can make your own. And then we will uh, go test this out on our toast. <laughs> okay, so we are in Lightburn. I don't know if you guys know, but a couple of updates ago, they actually created a functionality within Lightburn to make your own material test grids. All you need to do is come up to laser tools, material test, and it's gonna give you this menu here. So this is how many boxes you're gonna do. Um, so that's kind of your step. And same thing with your power. So like to give you an example, this is gonna give us 10 squares, min power 10, max power 100, and it's gonna step it by 10% each, each step. Now over here, we'll go 100 to like 1,000. It's gonna give us 10 boxes or 10, 10 rows. Now, you can either just do it straight from here if you wanna preview and see what it looks like, you go ahead and hit this guy and it'll show you right here. And this will kind of show you how it's gonna cut it in there. And then there you go. And that is exactly how it's gonna play out. What I don't like about this is this is good for a quick material test, but you, I don't think you can change the names or anything, like you can't put this as Baltic Birch or anything like that and make it a little bit more uh, personalized. You can change your parameters, but I don't think you can change any of any of that other stuff. So this comes, this comes through in a clutch, but it is not my favorite way to do this. If you want to get a little bit more specific with your power scales and tasks like that, you can come to o2creative.co.nz and go into the laser tools menu. This is gonna allow us to make a basic power test. You can do an advanced, engraved power test, curve test, all that stuff. First you come in here and, and set your speed units. I'll leave that millimeters per minute because this is gonna make a light burn five. You cannot do this for laser box. Min power is 10, max power is 100. We're gonna step it by 10. My controller uses min max power if you're using laser box. Our minimum speed, I'm going to make 1,000 millimeters per minute, max 10,000, and then I'm gonna step it by 1,000 to give us 10. Now, one thing I like here is that you can change your information here, so this, you could say this is walnut. This power right here is what this text will come out at, so 75 is fine. I'd probably do this at about 3,500. You can make your test shape rectangular, ellipse, or test shaped. Um, I will, you'll see the test shape in a second. I usually do rectangles, 10 millimeter squares. You're gonna fill them, and then you're gonna generate the file. While that's generating, I'm gonna pull up light burn just so I can toss that in there and show it to you. Here is light burn and here is the file. I don't know if it's because this place is in New Zealand or what, but it's always flipped upside down for me. So 
I know, bad joke. Um, so I just, you can just use your little tool right there to flip it, and this will be your scale. I'll grab the whole thing, bring it up here, and there you go. One thing to note is if you don't, well, first of all, if you don't have the shape properties tab, you can, you can click on window at the top of the screen and get that. But a lot of people get confused because they look up here and they're like, well, blue, it says that this power is 100. Well, if you click on the individual boxes, so this is the first one, this is 10%, right? If I come to shape properties, it says the power scale for that is 10%. Now, if I click on 40%, it's gonna jump to 40. If I jump, if I click on the 100%, it's gonna jump to 100. So that does stair step in there. Don't be fooled by this information right here. Okay, and then some other things you can do over here with OT Creatives, you can do an advanced power scale. That is the task shape that I was talking about. You can do an engraved power task where you, you'll get gradients, things like that. Uh, an interval task to see how close your dots you can get dots to each other and a curve test if you're going to be like cutting boxes or anything that's super helpful so that is o2creative.co.nz i'm not affiliated with them i just think it's a cool tool i will link it in the description down below all right here we are wonder bread in hand baby Woo! all right so we're going to throw it on laser bed what are we going to do guys what do we do next first things first we're going to focus Kind of difficult because it's soft. Next, we're going to run a quick frame. And then it's toast time, baby. Toast time. Okay, and once that power grid is run, we're going to pull our best settings off of that grid and we are going to toast some toast. But while we're perfecting that perfect piece of toast, I just wanna say thanks for sticking around till this time in the video. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, hit that like button. If you have not, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I'd like to give an extra special thanks to all of my patrons, especially my top tier or boiler maker patrons, Stephen Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coates, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Dwight Smith, Christopher Walters, Todd Stewart, Franklin the Tanklin, Paul Christensen, and Jason Ayers. Cheersies. Cheersies, weersies. Cheersies. Let's make some toast. All right, let's check out that perfect piece of toast. Oh. Oh. That's perfect. I'm going to toast my toast like this from now on. Totally worth it. <laughs> totally not worth it. This is what the burn pattern looked like. This thing is hard as a rock. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consume this. That would be a bad idea. Um, so what I did is I actually did the power grid on some plywood. So you guys can check it out. So good results of the power grid, bad results of the power grid. And all this tells us is that a toaster is for toasting toast. Just because you have a laser doesn't mean you need to laser everything. Take that however you wish, but if you are going to try a new material, now you know how to burn a test grid. And on that note, chin chin suckers, I'm out. Woo!